Hello, friends, Facebook friends, Songwriting with Soldiers community. I'm Mary Judd, the co-founder and program director. And for those of you who don't know about Songwriting with Soldiers, we are a nonprofit organization that holds retreats for military veterans, their families, active duty. We bring them together with professional songwriters and other creative professionals for a weekend of building creativity, connections, and strength, all sparked by collaborative songwriting. And today we have a special guest on our Creative Community Courses online special. We have a guest from our Colorado 2018 retreat at the Heart J Center in Loveland, Colorado. Her name is Michelle Roberts. Michelle, it's so good to have Hello. you here. It's uh, a blessing to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, we looking are forward to this. Good. And, and I know a lot of our community is, is really looking forward to hearing from you and more about your experience at Songwriting with Soldiers, a little bit about your song, These Five mm -hmm. Reasons, and how that came to be. So let's mm -hmm. just dive right in. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how you found out about Songwriting with Soldiers and ended up at the retreat. Well, it was, it was kind of organic, actually, how I found out about it, but um, I had just had back surgery, and I was laid up in bed, and I was like, oh, I have to do something with my life. Something, something has to change, right? I just knew something had to change, because the tra tra trajectory I was on was not good. Um, so I was, I don't know where I saw, there were programs at Heart J Center, and one of them was The Warriors Right, and the other one was Songwriting, and I reached out about The Warriors Right, because I'm like, I can't write a song. I have no musical capability. I mean, I, I was in choir in high school, but that was about it. Um, so I'm like, well, that wouldn't work for me. So I reached out about where's right. She's like, sorry, we're full, but you can sign up for songwriting. I'm like, whatever, okay. <laughs> so I, you know, having no idea what it was about, I signed up for it. And um, I did end up going to Warriors Right. And then I ended up obviously coming to songwriting, which changed my life. So you ended up writing with Bonnie Bishop, right? I love her, yes. <laughs> She's so amazing. Little, yeah, tell us a little bit about that, but how you how you came up with your song and tell us the story behind your song and a little, whatever you want to well, share about it. Well, I guess, you know, maybe if I, if I may, Mary, like start at the beginning of the retreat when I arrived, um, very much, I wanted to be there, but I didn't want to be there, right? I didn't want to like meet new people. I think many veterans have the same thing. Like we don't like to go to new places and discover new things. So I was very closed off coming to the retreat. And um, at Heart J Center, um, Silvendale Ranch, there's a beautiful river that runs through it and that there's a rock that I love, that's my rock. And I went out there just to be like, to get away from people all the time, like that's where I always went. And I was out at my rock and Bonnie came meandering out and she's like, hey, I, I don't even remember what she said to me, but she's so easy to talk to. And I'm like, well, I kind of have had this idea um, in my head. It's kind of like a lullaby, you know, from childhood. And I shared a little bit of that with her and that was about it. And then a couple hours later, we had our session. Um, do you want me to go over like the session as, as far as how that transpired or? Yeah, just if whatever you want to talk about as far as how you came up with your song and then what it's led to since. Okay. Um, so the song, you know, Bonnie, I have, she was amazing at helping me put words behind some of the emotions and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but at the time I was a single mother of five children and um, I'm gonna start crying talking about this. And the, um, the only thing that was really keeping me alive was my children, that was it, that was, that was it. And, um, and I just kind of wanted to uh, acknowledge that, I guess. And she helped me break it down, put it into verse. Um, you know, she would say, well, tell me about, tell me about Ella, you know, tell me about her and I'd say something. And, and so she was able to put some words behind that. And then we, and it was just, it was really beautiful writing it. And, um, I think she really was able to capture how much the pain that I was in at the time and how much the children kept me going and kept me, kept me alive, you know, really. So it was pretty fantastic. Um, she's magical, magical person. She is. And I'm going to change my background real quick because I actually have a picture of you two writing. And <laughs> that's awesome. I'll, that's so good. That's feeling like I'm on the porch with you, but this for those of you who weren't there, which is most of us in this actual setting right here, um, this is what it was like for Michelle and Bonnie to sit 
in this beautiful retreat center together with your dog. Forget your with dog. With Gilly, who's next to me right here, right now. So <laughs> my service dog, and, and Gilly is awesome. And she was a, a treasure to have there. But you can tell, like, we are processing some pretty good emotions, and but in a healthy, good way. And, and Gilly picked up on that. So that was, it was an amazing time because Bonnie knew the right questions to ask. Mm -hmm. And um, it turns out I didn't need any musical ability whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> That's that, that is so good that you bring that up just to remind people, because a lot of our participants thought at first that they would be writing the song or that they needed to know how to at least play music or sing it, play an instrument. So um, you showing up and being open to the process and being open to sharing your story led to an incredibly beautiful song that gets all of us choked up. I, know. <laughs> I get tears in my eyes thinking about it. Um, yeah, it was, I mean, it, I, I, I'm an advocate for people to speak up on, on how they really are doing, not, not sugarcoating things. And um, I think a lot of veterans, you know, try to put on the tough face. And um, my husband, the same, you know, he was a combat medic and no one wants to appear weak ever. And you're not weak by doing any of this or processing anything. It's healing and restorative. And it makes, it made all the difference. This one weekend made all the difference in my life like 48 hours i'm gonna cry again <laughs> that was it's amazing well i know that it you your story and your strength that you you just so bravely shared all weekend with us it was it was powerful for a lot of us and we're so grateful for you knowing what you've been through and that you have you've come through it all so strong. And after the retreat, you shared more news with us. I mean, you, you, you were really, you were really on a high after that weekend. Yeah. And, then, and, and then what happened? What happened after the retreat? Tell it, tell everybody. Um, beautiful. Yeah. Story. <laughs> so, so, you know, what do you, how do you explain when something in you changes, something changes, right? You just, and I can't put words beyond that, but um, I realized I needed to, like do more outreach for myself, be available to people more. Um, I went to the local VFW and I started attending meetings. Um, and I, the first night I went there, I sat in my Jeep and I, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I don't want to go in. I don't, even, but still I'm like, you know, I have to do this. I'm like, and just coming off that powerful high from that weekend. So I went in there and um, just started reaching out to people and, and doing more with my life. And, and that's where I met my husband, um, Corey. And, within so I think the songwriting was in what like uh, September October sometime yeah. there mm -hmm. um by the end of January he had moved in <laughs> so we met at the VFW and uh I never would have been open to the opportunity to even meet or talk like I had sworn off men forever and all that and I just wouldn't have been open to any of that had I not had this weekend and you know can I, I can't put my finger on exactly what made the change but it totally changed my life it made me open up I guess more and realize that you know I don't need to carry all this darkness around with me and music can super help express it um and so, yeah so we met Corey and then got married last uh, year and a half ago and um you know, is life easy no and especially <laughs> this year this is stupid but uh, <laughs> um but it's great and it's wonderful and I'm so much happier and my children are so much happier mm. and um you know, it's like, it's not, it's not as dark as it used to be. So it's just amazing. Definitely incredible. That's, that makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> it, it, I mean, I really. Mean, and, and you hear a lot of like veteran, so um, I was commander of the VFW for a short while. And, you know, I talked to a lot of veterans. I talked to, now I talk to everybody. Um, and, and I forgot where I was going with this, but no, I, I, it's, people don't, they say all the time, well, this program made a difference. This made a difference in my life, but it really did. Like, I, I think we hear a lot, oh, this, this will shape you. This will do something. This profoundly changed my life. And I can't put my finger on exactly what it was. I guess maybe just knowing that I could express myself in a way that's musical or, you know, just let some of that, like taking that layer of sludge off the top mm -hmm. and that just wears that down. And so you're able to, to function more. And so I, I tell every veteran I meet, I'm like, you have to check it out, do this, you know, and you can see the, the glaze come up like, oh, I'm not musical, but like, trust me, it's like, it's amazing. So, yeah, well, it's, and I'm so glad you had that experience, Michelle. And I remember the first day when you drove up and you were very, 
you know, very guarded, understandably so. Most people are when they come to, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, veterans in particular, but uh, a new experience like that, you're not sure what to expect. You don't know, people think, well, is it gonna be kumbaya by the fire? Or do we right, have to right. <laughs> And so, you know, it, it's so good to hear you say this because it is hard to put your finger on exactly what, and often people will assume it's the song and the songs are so powerful. Oh, they're but amazing. We really do make an effort to, to put it, uh, it surrounded in a program that really, you know, our mission use collaborative songwriting to build creativity, connections and strengths. And you yeah. embody that right now. And it, it really <laughs> shows that, you know, a lot of the effort we put into creating that, providing a beautiful space like Heart J Center. It's just oh, so right yes. there that, that does its own job right there of clearing mm -hmm. a lot of space for you. And then the creative workshops when you're not songwriting, you know, and the opportunities to meditate or, you know, have mm -hmm. other ways to connect with yourself or with the other veterans, with the staff. Mm -hmm. So we're really, we really work hard to try to build that connection throughout the weekend and then stay in touch afterwards. And so that's when we first heard about your, mm -hmm. your meeting Corey at, on our yes. follow-up phone call when we all got on the phone together and, and touch base and share. Yes, updates. I was so in truth or was great update. New Mexico. New Mexico, yeah, I remember that call. It was great. It was yeah, super, and then I said Bonnie too. So that, that was right. wonderful. Great, well, and then tell us about Corey because Corey's a veteran. So what happened with Corey? <laughs> yeah, so Corey, um, so of course I said, you have to go and because he loves me, he's like, okay, uh, um, but <laughs> He did three deployments in Iraq as a combat medic, and then he did another deployment um, doing human intelligence gathering, um, espionage, basically. And, um, you know, he got out early. It, that took his toll on him. And he came to songwriting. And unfortunately, when he came to songwriting, he was going through EMDR at the VA at the same time. And he needs to come back. Now he's not doing EMDR. <laughs> but it really... It, I would say it changed him too. Like he has the song, they wrote Blue Lake. Um, it's like hanging on our refrigerator and he's very musical already, but it just was wonderful for him to come and see and, and, and collaborate and write music. And um, it was wonderful to go together too. And I say that really impacted him in a positive way. Um, huge, hugely, yeah, definitely. And he's a quiet person, so he doesn't do as much I guess blabbing as I do, but <laughs> um, but it was it was amazing for him. So, and it was wonderful to go there and go and see the other veterans and hear their songs again too. I mean, every song is just so powerful. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a, there's a double win there. You know, you get your song and then you get to hear the songs of each other and have others hearing you your song also relating. Mm -hmm. So, I'm hoping one one of the things that we're doing now um, is and COVID's really been a. a another nudge in this direction, but doing some more online sessions, actually songwriting. So we're finding that people, when they get to write a second song, it's often, you know, another level of depth that mm -hmm. really, really keeps you moving forward. So we're hoping or planning to bring retreats back together for more writing. Oh, I have chills. That's awesome. That'd be so cool. I know Bonnie and I, we wrote a Christmas song together. Um, and she sent me the notes and that was pretty cool. Like we just did that on our own without you, but I can see where that would easily work because she's so fantastically talented. Um, and everyone is every, every songwriter, gosh, will, oh gosh, you know, I mean, amazing people. So that's an awesome idea. That'd be super cool. Well, how, how did it spark your creativity? Because it sounds like you're doing some really creative things too, since you attended the retreat. Um, oh, well, first of all, learning to play guitar, um, <laughs> Awesome. You know, like I had never picked up a guitar before. No, I, I lied. I lied. I had picked it up, but I didn't have a clue. I'm like, one day I'm learning to play guitar, but I've actually been between Corey teaching me and um, Fender. And then just now I know how to read tabs and um, learning that. So I'm still a little fumble fingered, but it's okay. <laughs> um, so that helped me do that. And then it also helped me, um, I think, you know, I think all these little things add up and they give you little, little boost of confidence. Mm -hmm. And so it helped me start our company that I started. Um, it's helped me just in many areas in life and, and to slow down and go take a look at myself. Like, what am I doing today for myself versus, you know, like sitting down and play guitar is important to me every day. So I make sure that I do that now. 
um, drawing. I started drawing too, because you know, we did that scrap, it's not like scrapbooking, but the papers and- yeah, Illustrated. But, yeah, and just like that kind of stuff. Um, I actually have a picture of this, is not, oh, I'll take it down for like I painted this little thing right here of the mountains. Like, it's not great, but it's fun to sit down and do stuff, you know? So I've been doing that and um, yeah, it's just really, it's, I think it just shifted the brain, definitely yeah. is what happened. That's great, fantastic. And, and like you said, it's so important to give yourself the permission to play, to create, and it does build confidence in unexpected ways. So Yeah, it's like little bits. You know, I always, I, I always tell my kids, I'm like, one degree of change makes such a difference. If you're going to cross the country, if you go off one degree, you're going to end up in a different city. It's like every day, just work on little bits. And right. I, and it just, I opened up the door for that, you know, really, really helped mm -hmm. with that. So tell us about the company you started. What's that? I love my company. <laughs> um, so Veterans Housing Network. Um, I've been in real estate for over 20 years and I became a realtor because, oh, this is, this is me on air. I didn't like realtors. So I became a realtor because I got misrepresented by what I'm like, I can do better than this. So I became a realtor. Mm -hmm. Well, as I'm going to real estate and obviously working with more and more veterans, I started noticing that, you know, veterans and senior citizens are the two most preyed upon demographics in the United States. So um, I'm like, I got sick of seeing there's some, some several, several large companies and they pop up on every website that loan, do home loans for veterans and they charge 10,000 more basically for, or for closing costs and about one point higher on the loans in general. So, so they're preying on veterans and then they're charging them so much more and not doing them any justice. And I'm like, we can do better than this. So I took our model and I kind of flipped it. And what we are is a veteran to veteran real estate network. So if someone's moving to Biloxi, Mississippi, I called on there to the veteran real estate agent that we have, or several of them, like I have several in Fort Carson. And, um, I say, hey, so-and-so wants to buy a house. It's a veteran to veteran. Veterans understand veterans better. We know that we know, you know, if, if a veteran doesn't want to live in a helicopter flight path, we get it. You know, we don't live next to train, we get that. So that helps, but then we also pair them up with local lenders who most are veterans as well and um, get them a great loan, a much better loan than these big companies offer. And then we give back 10% to you <laughs> um, this year to veteran nonprofits. But obviously I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Songwriting for Soldiers. So it's important for me to give back to you guys. So then we give back. So the idea is to keep, you know, veteran to veteran and keep everything in the veteran community. And um, it's really, really been well received and people are loving it. So, so far, so good. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> It's and exciting. A story. It's a lot of work. I hope you get that story out to a lot of people because that just, just, that's the essence of finding yourself and finding your strengths and then seeing a place where you feel passionate that has a need and putting yourself out there. It so. does. It really, it, it definitely has a need. I just, and I, I can't believe how many veterans, you know, they get, um, I don't know if you're familiar with BAH, but it's a housing allowance that they'll get while using their GI bill or while they're in, they can use that money to buy a house versus paid on rent. And there's so many misconceptions out there on VA loans and what it takes to buy a house. And um, I, I'm i here to like break all those and get veterans owning houses because I'll digress real quick. I just did a blog, but renting versus owning and a two year spread, the net worth of the veteran after two years of owning a home versus renting it is $64,000 more than the renter. 64,000, you can't yeah. save that much in two years. It's huge. Yeah. So well, if, if our veterans watching our community is interested in learning more, how do they learn more from you? Um, so they can go to our website, which is veteranshousingnetwork.com. Um, we have our website, we have our Facebook page, um, also on LinkedIn, and they can also, um, <laughs> I said they can call us, but I don't have our phone number memorized off the top of my head. Um, but we can get that here eventually. <laughs> um, and then post it to our group, post your contact information, the best way to get in touch with you if they want to learn more. Okay, that sounds good. I, yeah, I do have business cards, but I don't want to go looking for them right now. So take a picture um, and post it. I'll do that. Yeah, but, vet, but veteranshousingnetwork.com is the easiest way. Um, and that has, there's several pages like PCS, ETS, veterans moving, VA loans. Um, and then also for veteran realtors that want to get involved, they want to be part of the network. Um, they can also go on there as well. So we can do that. Well, I know we have some in our community. So this is great. This is one of our dreams is with this program is helping people connect veterans, military, 
our participants connect back to themselves first, mm -hmm. you know, start shedding the layers where so you really feel like yourself again, connecting with each other, connecting with civilian community, you know, transitioning, and then ideally back where you live in your community mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and forth. So you are modeling this so well. <laughs> <laughs> Unintentionally. And I and I want to say something, Mary, because I think this is really important for people to hear. Because I watch things like this sometimes. I'm like, yeah, you know, like I, I get cynical. And I want to tell people, like, I still have really hard days. And Corey still has hard days. Mm -hmm. And I bet you have hard days. I bet everyone has hard days. And I think we all need to, especially this year, talk about that. Say, okay, you know, it's not easy every day. And it's okay to give yourself a break and give yourself some grace in life. And then, but just keep moving forward you know, take a small step, maybe not today, but maybe tomorrow you take, you know, do, do one push. If you want to work out, do one push up and then you do next day do two, you know, it's just do that. But I, I hope that in the end of my days that I will have given back the way I, I, I'm able to like to the most, you know what I'm saying? To, to maximize that, <laughs> I guess I'm not verbalizing that very well, but Oh, a deep bow to you, Michelle Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Mary. <laughs> I'm going to change my background one more time because I can now do our closure with you because I feel like giving you a hug. And unfortunately, I know. we're not in the same place. And even no. before, we couldn't because of COVID. But yes, this is the memory of our group hug at the retreat. And I'm sending this to you right now because I'm so thankful for you taking this time today. I'm so grateful for you hanging in there in life in general and then taking it with by the taking it by the horns <laughs> yeah and who knew i like i didn't i didn't know i was going to do that but all of a sudden I, I just was super compelled i i saw several people get taken advantage of and i'm like and i said no more like this is not going to happen so mm. yeah and i i want to thank you mary like obviously you know from our emails and everything without crying um you you obviously changed my life and the program so thank you so much for I'm sure you had to push through a lot of things to keep it going. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Look forward to talking to you again really soon, Michelle. All right. I'm sure you're going to get, you'll probably get some questions and, and comments from our friends. Uh, thank you so much. Caleb, Absolutely. Yeah. And have them reach out to me. I, I, you know, don't sleep well still. So I'll answer their questions all times and night. <laughs> but take care of yourself, Mary. Thank you so much. And tell everybody on the staff and everything I said, hello. I will. Thank you. Okay. All right. Family. Happy Thanksgiving. All right. Thank you. Same to you. <laughs>